Hi, I'm Jamie. This is Dead Dodge Garage, and I heard you guys like chargers, so... Oh, there you go. Ooh, bonus Ram charger, too. Just cannot have anything nice. Ugh. Hey, international sales are live on our web store. Ah, turns out all I had to do was hit one button. It's really complicated. Anyway, if you want Dead Dodge Garage merch, go to deaddodgegarage.com and click the button that says merch, and you will find it. Thank you very much. Avid watchers of the channel will recognize this as the 69 Charger that I picked up in Chicago, Illinois, and attempted to drive all the way back to Washington State. Almost made it. Unfortunately, I blew the water pump, ruined the radiator, which has since been restored, and developed some other problems. Notably, it started billowing smoke out of the tailpipe on the driver's side due to a completely destroyed head gasket and loose head bolts over here. About a month ago, I did another video on this car in which Tom Hergert and I completely restored the top end of this 318. Looks great. During the course of filming the video, I slightly forgot about something which several commenters reminded me about later. This distributor in this engine has like no functioning springs and it's stuck in the all party all the time mode. It's really silly because I was trying to get this thing tuned and running correctly at the end of that video and it wasn't cooperating. So many things are making sense now. This thing will never run right with an effectively locked out distributor. So today we're gonna fix that. With that done, I'll verify we still have full throttle. I'll twist on the screws on the carburetor and make sure this 318 is running the best it possibly can with that BBD carburetor on top. And speaking of that BBD carburetor, why do you all hate it so much? I like the BBD. It's really simple and it's so easy to work on. Oh, I forgot how much I love this car. I love my 68 more, but still. Cold start. Well, that's not bad. Actually, sounds really good. Oh yeah, we went to charge the AC on this thing just to rediscover that these controls didn't work. They do work now, so that's cool. Careful, Aang. Don't ruin the tire. Ooh, Daisy Mag. There's all kinds of good wheels around here. Rally wheels, slot mags, cop steelies. Oh my. It's okay, buddy. No one on the internet appreciates you, but I still do. Now, if you didn't see that road trip video, this is what I pointed out then. There's no spring action. I forgot. Now, of course, on the Mopar, the gear is in a separate shaft, and you don't have to get this pointed exactly correctly when you reinstall the distributor. You can only put it in right or wrong. So make sure you note which way it's pointing before you pull it out. Now, obviously, you can put the body in many different positions, so I always eyeball where the vacuum pod is pointing and try to get it back that way when I'm done. Now unbolting the distributor in your Mopar small block is always a little challenging because it's at the back of the engine, but on an AC car like this, yeah, you're not getting back there with a normal wrench. So you really need a distributor tool like this. Ta-da! Kind of came out too easily, actually. I don't think that O-ring's really any good. Ooh, shiny new tune-up parts. I installed those on the side of the road in Montana. I just noticed something really funny about this. The vacuum advance pod is bad too. That means there was absolutely zero advance from this unit and a vacuum leak. It's time once again for one of my favorite activities, shopping for parts in the back building at Rocket. And parts we have, you know, a few, just a few. Mm-hmm. What we're looking for here, the common single point aluminum body distributor that was used by Chrysler from sometime in the 60s until 1972. It's very similar to the big block one, but on the big block unit, the vacuum advance points the other direction. So it's easy to spot. In big block land, there are multiple heights, depending on which big block. In small block land, there's just one. There's one now. It's red for some reason. That's interesting. It's the aluminum body, but it has the earlier style bearing plate instead of the magic floating one. Best option so far, 
This is an electronic unit, but it happens to have the earlier point style vacuum pod on it. The arms point a different direction. And it's got the same part number weights and it has springs. So maybe we part this one out to fix that one. I found a complete working small block unit, but the advanced mechanism is a little sticky, which I don't really want to fix. But wait, there's more. This one actually works. Well, wouldn't you know, this just happens to be a correct 1969 only 318 two barrel distributor. Neat. <sighs> Great. Now I have to make it nice. Yeah, so uh, I'm not putting this in there looking like that. We gotta make it pretty. I've recently become a humongous nerd for distributors. They're really fun. Look at this one. It's actually not all the way together, but it's pretty nice. Here's another one I did. Dual point. It's not put together either for some reason, but it's pretty nice. Unfortunately, I can't really spend a whole day on this, but it's getting better. All done by hand. In case you don't know anything about distributors, I'll give you the Cliff Notes version. Basically, they make sparks happen, but in a slightly more detailed way, they make sparks happen at a given time based on various inputs. The engines we deal with want spark advance. They want the spark to happen a certain number of degrees of crankshaft rotation before the piston gets to the top dead center position. We accomplish that with three different things. Base timing, mechanical advance, and vacuum advance. Put simply, base timing is set by where you point the distributor body. Mechanical timing is controlled by these weights and springs. The faster this thing spins, the further out the weights go and the more advance you get. This can be tuned, of course. And vacuum advance is controlled by this guy. A hose from your carburetor sets the amount of vacuum going into it, which changes how much advance you get there. With no springs at all and a broken vacuum pod, the distributor I took out did none of that stuff, basically. Had to do it. Yeah. Couldn't leave the vacuum pod ugly. Now these parts are actually supposed to be plated. Recently, we got some of this stuff. Silver CAD look-alike spray paint. It looks pretty good. You're supposed to do it in like three thin coats. That one was not thin. That's my bad. But if you get it right, it gives you that nice powdery finish that the coated parts would have. Now I am gonna use the actual plate assembly out of this distributor. For one thing, I already put new parts on it. For another thing, it looks a lot better than this one. Sure is easier to check the points gap like this. Now, unsurprisingly, because I pulled this plate out of another body, that's no longer set correctly. Heck, it might not have been set correctly to begin with, now that I think about it. Nailed it! Nice. Not perfect. We don't have that kind of time, but looks pretty good and it works. Oh yeah, multiple people have asked recently, what's up with this car? Uh, this, it's actually headed to Germany, funny enough. We'll do a video on this later. There we go, installed, where literally no one will ever see it. Random timing stab, how close is it? Pretty close. Seems pretty happy with life at 13 degrees. Nice. Uh, there's like a 30 or 31 degree curve in this distributor. Things start to make sense when you learn that the factory timing spec is actually zero degrees, plus or minus two and a half. I really don't think that's what this thing wants in life, but okay. Three is like two and a half, the spec being zero plus or minus two and a half. No, it doesn't like that. It parts out of the car with it set there. Of course, we don't know if the timing mark is even correct. Nah, it seems pretty happy here at what the gun says is 10. It's gonna be a lot of timing on the top, especially when you consider the added vacuum advance. But I think I'm gonna drive it here and see what it does. Man, this is now a really sweet running engine. Tom went ahead and aired up the tire. He seemed really concerned about that. It's almost like they're brand new and cost a ridiculous amount of money or something. Oh man, this is great. I wish the heater had worked when I drove it 1800 miles. The biggest concern when messing with the timing like this and kind of off in the weeds where you're not totally sure what's right and what isn't, pinging. Pinging is ignition spark that happens too fast. That can melt things, so you always want to be listening for pinging when you're tuning like this. It'll happen the worst under a heavy load. 
meaning hard throttle and going up a hill. So let's try that. No pinging, still pretty gutless. And the throttle does still have a bit of a hesitation. So I think I might just give it another bump and see what happens. When setting the timing in something 50 years old, one cannot simply assume that the mark is correct. Trust, but verify. Well, it sounds better. Oh, we're just on the ragged edge. I heard the slightest little amount of pinging, but man, does it run better than it ever has. Oh yeah, yeah, it's too much. Oh, the power is way better. When I was driving this thing across the Midwest, just getting up to highway speed off of an on-ramp was very challenging. I'll tell you right now, it is much improved. Oh yeah, Tom finally put the wood grain wheel back on. So much better. It's still crooked, but it's less crooked. Another clue you might have a little too much advance is when you're in a steady state cruise like this and you can kind of hear it doing that buffeting thing. But then you get into the throttle, the vacuum advance drops off and it kind of goes away. Just a little too much. It's the rocket test drive spot, after dark edition. Just a little sinister. You don't want to see this speed up on you in the rear view on an abandoned road at night. We'll take the tiniest little bump back out. Mm, too tiny. Maybe there. Stay. I almost always leave distributors just loose enough to be adjusted like this. Oh no, we lost one. These inner bulbs are supposed to be dimmer than that, but for some reason they never are. Oh yeah. Not a bad sounding 318. We gotta test it. but so much better. It makes something like the power it should. And I didn't hear any pinging that time. It chirped the tires a little bit. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Just a little one. I think the real lesson here is, if you're gonna fly like 2,400 miles away to bring a charger home, take a whole distributor with you you'll have a much better time of things. Honestly, it's entirely possible that a messed up timing curve contributed to the head gasket's early demise. I did find loose head bolts, but I don't know, maybe they loosened themselves as the gasket let go. It's hard saying, but it's impossible to deny it is much better now than it has been since I met it. And that's great. still might be a faint pinging. I need to pull out a little bit more, but we're close. Well, there's where I ended up at on the side of the road. 11 degrees base, which in theory is still too much. But as you heard, it kind of likes it. This is just a 318 and it's painfully stock. So I'm just trying to balance not blowing it up with acceptable performance. And that's pretty much where we're at now. If you want to know more about modifying timing curves for slightly spicier engines, I've got a video on that. It's called Performance Timing Curves for Dummies Like Me. And I meant that. Anyway, this thing's basically fixed forever. A couple more thoughts on distributors before I leave you. There's some debate in uh, automotive circles about whether your vacuum advance should be connected to manifold vacuum or ported vacuum, which is above the throttle blades, meaning it's not in play at idle. I'm going to do a whole video on working with that idea in the future. Just know that with these factory distributor setups, this needs to be run to Ported Advance, or it's not going to work right. I stand corrected. There's one broken spring in there. Oh yeah, this one that I took out was definitely not an original. That deep cut is the same as is used on electronic distributors, and there are a good few points distributors that look like that. There's a special points trigger wire to plug that larger hole. The earlier points distributors use this kind of wire in a hole 
like that. The distributor is a remarkably simple device, but there is a good bit of science involved here. Really? We're still doing that? Another thing to take note of, how your car starts after you adjust the timing. If it starts like that, you're definitely in the ballpark. If it struggles, you know, kind of sounds like it's fighting against the starter. <laughs> probably too much advance. And if it doesn't want to start at all, well, it's probably not enough. In conclusion, distributors are cool, chargers are neat. My name's Jamie and I've got smelly feet. Remind me to tighten the belt again. With any luck, that's about it for the mechanicals on the OtterPop charger here. Should be good to go. There are still some little things we need to tend to, like this door. That's right, you better shut. Hey, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate that. I'm gonna hit 20,000 subscribers pretty quick here, and well, you're helping me in accomplishing all my dreams and taking over the world, so thank you very much. And remember, this kills the crab.